like a pro. <laughs> That's what he does. <laughs>
Okay, so in the back, my sister, that brown color that you see, it was actually a little bit more toned when when we initially did it. However, hair color, hair color fades and everything eventually goes back to pulling the warmth that all hair color does just because that's just science. That's how it works out. Um, and so I'm going to cool her off. I definitely know that I did want to not make her as warm this time. I wanted to kind of make her a little bit more ashy -er, you know, not ash completely, but just a lot cooler than what, you know, the warmth is present right now. So to counteract this red, I'm using a 6NJ for the back, um, those foils that I did back there. And let's be clear, let me go ahead and clarify that just because I use foils does not mean I'm going to have lines of demarcation. This is why I teased every single last section that I did back there for a seamless grow out, okay? So teasing helps a lot. And I did a lot of weaving and slicing and yeah, it, it, this this is just all technique, guys, okay? Like I, I can't even sit here and act like I know how to even explain what I was doing. I was just said you know lord please got my hands because i just i don't know i i don't know we, it's gonna get there though it's gonna get there but for the formula 6nj which stands for neutral jade jade of course means you know green if you didn't know um and so that green is going to counteract that red warmth and it's going to cool it off a whole lot and that six is going to provide a mid shade so we don't have you know harsh ends and then just some blonde being thrown up in the at the root you know that's gonna when it if to see that all come together it's not gonna be like the prettiest picture to me it's just not gonna blend as much so this six inch shade is gonna provide a nice softer mid shade then after that I'm gonna go through and I tease some more out and I did my second formula and I did that to kind of fill in some of the other spots where that blonde was just so I could, you know, provide like a whole nother shade. And then in the back, I also did very, very, very minimal highlights in the back using my blonde solutions. And um, I'll put that formula up there as well so you can see that. And that's kind of what we have going on in the back. So in the back, this was really more low lighting than anything. I didn't really want highlights in the back because I kind of wanted to restructure this so it could read like a partial placement instead of a full head of color. Um, and though I could only achieve that but so much, and reason being is because I didn't want to totally eradicate the color that we had in the back. I still wanted to use some of some of it. I just wanted to get rid of, you know, about 60 to 70 percent of it because I needed a really nice clear crisp backdrop so um, when I go to the front and start foiling that part it will lay on it really nice and it won't look like a whole bunch of blonde so now we're in the front and I did a combination of some teasy lights teasy slices and I'm working on a diagonal, working on angles here in the front because I really want this to be really, really blended. I'm really trying to blend out all these lines that she has here. And I also like, I, I love using like really thin slices because it just provides such great detail to a canvas. Like any single time I have a client who's looking for detailed pops, I'm automatically know I'm going in with a few slices here and there because it's just gonna throw in those the wow pops of color sometimes. Sometimes the weaves, weaves don't do that for you all the time unless they're like really, really, really big and chunky um with like minimal stitches so you're looking at like maybe three stitches maybe even two for like you know those big chunky pieces to pop but if i want something that's going to kind of you know go with the flow and not take away from the hair color but you know just provide those nice you know strands of brightness i'm automatically going in with my slices so that's what I'm doing for the front. And I have her mohawk here in the center too. I'm gonna do the same placement throughout that part as well. And um, like I said, guys, this was just all like, you know, just, just straight technique. Like I have never done this placement before in my life. This was straight instinct. You know, I just kinda did what I thought was necessary for each section. And that's another thing. When you're working with uh, heads of hair that look like this, um, for me, what I think, I think this reads more like a color correction than an actual touch up because, well, 
considering the direction she was going. And that always is the difference. It depended on where they're trying to get to. And I know that she didn't want to be blonde anymore because the maintenance was kind of killing her being way out there in the hot zone with that blonde. Yeah, that's, that's a bit much. So being that we were going to, we were trying to make this read more like a partial placement and just trying to, you know, just kind of take it down a couple notches. Um, this was definitely more the color correction category and color corrections, guys, there is no, like, I feel like anybody can do a color correction, but color corrections are solely based upon your skill level. You know, you can only achieve the results that you can do. You know what I'm saying? Like I could have easily just covered her hair all the way up with something and we could have went on about her day, but I wanted to customize it again and really, you know, cater to what she wanted. And I know my sister loves hair color, so I wanted to make it so she can wear it, enjoy it, and it still give her, you know, that fresh brightness that she wants. So again, going in with my sections, I have the Mohawk section and then I have the other four as well. And then I also have her a little thin, about an inch, inch and a half, maybe, maybe an inch and a quarter uh, around her hairline because that is going to be where we're going to do some really thin, really, really almost like a baby light around her hairline of course the money piece there because that is going to keep the brightness there and since everything else is going to be toned down we still need to keep her bright and just doing that a little bit around the face my god mm, that does so much for a head of color to just have that little bit there because when they pull that hair back they, their hair all it just always looks bright it always looks fresh and it also makes everything else pop so that's how I did this and with, with color corrections you kind of got to do that you know you look at the roots you look at the zone two which is kind of like where the mid chef is and then you look at zone three and you just break down what you want to do for each one of those sections and what your game plan is and what you want to see and then you, you kind of just start building your look after that so that's what I did with this entire look. Um, like I have said plenty of times throughout the video thus far, I didn't have any, um, I didn't have no specific direction. I just took it section by section and I just thought about what I wanted to see. And, you know, knowing technique helps because you, you know what to do to kind of achieve it. And that's what we did. Alrighty y'all, so we are now up here at this face frame and I am teasing and teasing and teasing away because I want this to be so blended and lived in. And um, I still have some other pieces that I left out because I'm gonna go back through with my uh, second formula that I use with the Demi Color, the level sevens. And I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna put a little bit more on that and I'm also gonna tease some more out and throw in some of the uh level six and j that we put from the back i'm gonna throw a little bit of that up in the crown as well just so it's, it marries everywhere it just won't be as much in the front as it was in the back and so that is going to help us create this wonderful blended masterpiece and the key with lived in is low maintenance okay like lived in color is in right now and i understand why because a lot of people want to wear hair color but you don't want to wear it in a complicated fashion unless you're just not bothered by it most people you know are on the go our lifestyles you know they are kind of busy you know a little bit more these days and we kind of want to have the luxury of wearing things without having to uh cut you know do like full-blown commitments being in the salon all the time and you know you do have people who don't mind that but for the most part you kind of want to have cake and eat it too and so live in color kind of gives you uh it gives you the best of both worlds you know you can wear those beautiful tones beautiful colors and you don't have to commit to being in a salon all the time so now she'll really be on the track to maybe doing a touch up like once a year for her highlights and that's honestly the best way to go because you don't want to over process the hair so look at this color y'all we have blended her out and i wanted y'all to see it in a blow dry state being that i spent so much time on the hair color portion and showing y'all what i was doing there i did not show the blow dry um or me pressing it out this time we just jumped from blow dry 
showing it straight and then um of course styling towards the end but this color re read beautifully when it was curly and it's it's blow dried now so when she does those stretched natural styles you know flexi rods and waves and things of that nature this blow dry state i can see that that when she does those styles it's going to just be so beautiful and then i'm also going to show it to you guys straight as well so you can see what that looks like and it's really 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 important to see how your hair color looks in all three uh stages especially when you're a natural curly girl because some people like to wear their hair curly sometimes and sometimes you like to wear straight well hair color does not translate easily between those three uh stages some people here look phenomenal when it's curly but when you straighten it it's like ooh. And sometimes it's vice versa. Like, I love it when it's uh, straight, but when it's curly, it doesn't look all that good. So understanding technique and placement and how people wear their hair is a very, very, very big part in doing custom hair color blends because you have to understand their lifestyle, what they can commit to, and how they wear their hair. And everything just ain't for everybody. But I am proud. I am so proud of this work. Like, Jesus Christ. Um, it took me all day to do her hair. I'm not going to lie probably would have took even longer uh <laughs> it could have took even longer but i was able to kind of you know cut some things down and whatnot uh, as far as timing was concerned but even still um it turned out great yeah i'm i am i'm pleased so when it comes to color correction make sure you find a stylist who understands take your time and make sure you also have an idea of how much time it can take as well. And biggest thing is also, guys, don't be cheap. Don't be cheap when it comes to your hair color. You know, you spend a lot more money trying to correct things and trying to get them done the first time. So always having somebody there to explain, you know, the risk of each color, you know, color changes and stuff like that. That helps a lot so you can make informed decisions. Now, if you are part of the Brandy Beauty family, you already know how this works. And if you're not a part of the Brandy Beauty family, uh, I'm going to go ahead and subscribe. Okay, let's just go ahead and just get that done now. Okay, so uh, y'all know how I feel about trimming hair. It's a non-negotiable. Um, hair is dead. It is a fiber. It is not living, so it does not have the capability of repairing itself. So whatever is dead, you kind of got to get rid of it, okay? Um, so I'm going to go through, trim her ends up real good. Now, she did say she just got a trim about a month and, about a month ago. For me, hairstylist language, sometimes that means a long time, depending on the styles that you have worn and stuff, you know, different wear and tear that happens. Sometimes if you brushed your hair more this month than that month, you might experience more damage this month. You know, your ends might be looking a little bit more raggedy or if you just had some braids, you know. So sometimes it's not about the duration. It's about what happened during these weeks, all right? So that's kind of how I base, you know, your trims in um, the regimen that I put you on off. So trimmed her up real good. And of course, I always think anytime you do any type of hair color, you need to get a haircut even if it's just like a little light dusting because you know sometimes there are a little uh, uh damage can happen during hair color sessions sometimes so everything you take out you have to make sure that you put back in and so um trimming your hair helps to seal the cuticle and it also helps to maintain the integrity okay y'all so for styling we're gonna keep this uh very simple y'all know my favorite my toss 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 waves i don't know why i just love waves so much i feel like i feel like when you really want to see like the true character and the personality of hair color sometime to add texture back into the hair just it allows you to see it move and it gives it some kind of you know gives it that flavor gives it that sauce and you can see all the colors kind of just intertwining together so waves it is waves it always gonna be okay but but y'all know this so i'm using my um inch and a quarter iron my babyless iron i'm just taking that through different directions and just 
raking it through that's it nothing nothing fancy just doing my regular you know waves and then i am going to rake those out with my fingers just because the comb just gives a more uniform look and when i'm really just want to keep things lived in kind of messy natural beach wave your fingers they are the perfect tools to you utilize for that so fingers it was and as for her maintenance um she is going to need a good toning shampoo i always love the matrix brass off uh, that's really really good um so good toning shampoo um a moisturizing shampoo um she can use a gentle sulfate free, sulfate free clarifying shampoo as well she can add that in her regimen and then once a month um a good hair mask will do um no particular brand um because there are so many good ones out there but um a hair mask because when you um get hair color you are removing um keratin and um all the things that your hair needs you're kind of removing it from the structure of your hair you know you're restructuring the hair almost so everything you take out you have to put back in that's moisture that's protein all those good things so that's going to be essential but not all the time because it's only so much your hair can take it's only so much it's going to receive so she doesn't need to do it all the time you know once a month starting out is good and if she needs to do more then she can increase it so that's just about it guys and i can just i just couldn't be happier with this turnout this just turned out beautifully um i am so pleased y'all this thing almost made me lose an eye like i almost put my eye out trying to do uh correct this color and get her back in the game but we did it oh god we did it thank y'all so much for watching um i hope this video was entertaining <laughs> i'm sure it was and um make sure y'all like share comment subscribe all that good stuff and i'll see y'all in my next video now this don't make no sense at all you know you bad. Take your foot off these folk neck. Who oh, I don't know how much more of this beauty I can take. You can't be giving us all that at once. You're going to have to give it to us in increments because, baby, you bad. Love you back.